So now that we've put the crank in the engine and we've torqued the whole thing up, the next thing to do is to put the pistons and conrods in. So because I'm using the standard pistons and conrod setup for the B18C4, I've already got the gudgeon pins in there, so I don't need to worry about that. The thing that I would need to do really is to, um, to place the bearings, which I'm going to do, and also um, replace the piston rings. So the first thing I need to do is take the old uh, piston rings off. So all I can do is um, just walk the first part of them off, like this, and edge it out. Just being careful not to scuff actual mating surfaces. Then get the second ring off. Just like that. Second ring's off. Then the oil control rings. These are very light rings. One off, then the second, and this is the final one to come out. That's how that works. Then we go to our new fresh set of rings. The nice thing about the NPR rings is they actually say which are the first, which are the second, and which are the oil control rings, which is uh, pretty good because at least you know where you are then. The other thing to note about these rings is they actually have um, some numeration on them as well. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that the N is sticking up. Um, so the N is facing up so you can see it from, from, from the top. That means you've got the ring the right way around. So, what you do, start off by opening up the oil control rings, because you want to get the foot, the oil control rings in first, because they're at the bottom. Then you get the second, then you get the last. So, what we'll do, Start off here. These are not labelled either way, I don't think it really matters which way the oil control rings go in. So you slide that on just for your fingers. It's in. Then we get this second type of ring here. You slide that in. You notice it actually slides out like that, don't put it too far, but it's enough to make its way down. Okay. And finally, next ring, oil ring. Goes in after that. The one quick point I'd like to mention is that the oil um, control ring needs to be at the bottom here, um, so you see all the gaps uh, just just there. The um, second ring, which has N at the top there. That gap needs to be opposed to that, so round the, round the top. So um, I was going to use this tool, but I think I'm just going to actually use my hands because it seems a bit of a pain to use, in fact. So what I'm going to do is just walk it over the piston, get it down to that second location. Okay. 
the seat in like that. The last ring I need to put in is obviously the top ring. So this again has the N on the top. And then I need to place this at about this position. So I've got a third ring there, second ring there, and the first ring on the top here. I'm just walking it in. There we go. That's in there now. Nicely. So the next point I need to do um, is I need to put this piston in the uh, block and I'll show you that next. You need to uninstall the um, large end cap, the um, conrod cap, in order to replace the bearings and also install it on the crank. The best thing to do is just have it in the soft jaw of the chuck again and just slightly pull down and it should come off. You might have to tap it or something. But as long as you have the, these retaining uh, cap nuts on the end, the whole thing won't go flying off. So I'll just unscrew this and just take it off. Okay. Just as before, you want to remove the old bearing, and that is just by pressing on um, the edge of it, and then the bearing will come out like that. Put the old bearing in there. Then to put the new bearing in, just as before, you grab your engine assembly lube, just put a little bit on there, grab the new bearing, and then put it in um, with the tang uh, going in last. So make sure the lube is as so. And just slide in the rod bearing. It should fit nice and snug as this one has done. Okay. You can wipe any excess into the actual bearing itself, save so doing it later. And then you just do exactly the same with the cap. I'll show you the cap. So just push on the outside, and the whole bearing will come away. Get the engine assembly lube. Put a little dribble on. Okay. Put it all over the face. Grab another bearing. Again, you're going in from the caps from the tang side, but without the with the tang going in last, so it ends up in that hole. So again, just winding it in the whole time. You maintain the uh, contact, and then shift it together like that. Then again, the excess, just rub it in on the bearing surface. So you're ready. I have a top tip for you now. So the best thing to do in order to install these um, con rods is um, one thing you'll notice is that you have the the um, threaded end of the con rod, which the cap will go onto, and then the nuts will secure the cap, and therefore the whole assembly will be secured on the crank. Now, what you don't want to do is place this in the cylinder, and this can scratch the actual the the side of the cylinder wall. So how you get round that is you get some pipe, which in this case is 5 sixteenths uh, fuel hose, then get a knife, slice it the whole way down, if you can see that, I've sliced that the whole way down, and then pop it on the end, like, like so. Pop that right over there. Then you make another one, of course, as well, and pop that the whole way on as well. Now that means that you actually can't have any of those nasty gouges on the side of your uh, cylinder wall. That's a really big mistake uh, that you could do. One of the things you're going to really need to know is which way round the piston is um, respected to the engine. So again, um, the usefully Honda have put an arrow on there, so that's away from the gearbox end. So as you look down here, it's um, this is the gearbox end and this is 
the opposing end. So the arrow goes away. So that's away from this side of the gearbox is what you want to do. The other thing is it says in, which means inlet. So the inlet is actually this side and the exhaust is that side, which is easily signified by the, the dipstick. So that's how that goes. What you need to do to install these, get some engine assembly lube and just place it liberally around the piston skirt there. You could use engine oil as well, but I happen to have this on me, so I'll use that. Okay, and then same again. And then you would use um, a piston spring compressor. Now, I'm lucky enough that I've bought myself what I view as the best. You can buy the ARP piston spring compressor. It says, you know, as you can see, it's 81 millimeters, which is exactly correct for the B18C4 engine. Now, this is obviously only a one size um, that it can actually do. It's only an 81 bore it can do, so that's the kind of drawback to it. But if you build many of these engines, then you'd either want 81 millimeters, which is the standard bore, or 0.5 and so on um, over bores. So the nice thing about that is you just quickly slip that over the top. And that basically snugs up all of those piston rings without you having to have too much effort. Once you've got the um, piston inside the um, spring compressor, so you want to lower the conrod down to the bore. Gently do that. Get the piston skirt in place. and then gently tap on the piston in order to seat it. So that's inlet's gonna be facing towards me. And you should just be able to, making sure it's square, just push down gently. And then just push it down further. One thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is, um, which I've already done, is wind the crank so it's furthest away from. So if you look down here, you see that these cinders um, two and three are up, so one and four are down. So you need to make sure that you're far enough away um, so that you don't clang the top of the crank. So you push further forward, then you're in. So that's all you do, and then you can just spin over the um, whole engine. I'm in. Make sure it doesn't fall out. Okay. Then looking at the reverse side, we can just carry on pushing. is where these protectors come in really handy. It means I won't do any damage. And I'm snugged up. Then I can just stop this whole caboodle from going around any further. Just check I'm actually fully down to the bore. Pull off my protectors, knowing that I haven't done any damage to my bearing surface. If you do do damage to your bearing surface, you need to get your crank polished again. That's an absolute nightmare, a complete waste of money. So, then you notice there's a tang towards me, okay, which is on the exhaust side. I also have a corresponding tang up here. So, all I'll do then make sure I've got everything lined up and just place the um, tang on top of that just apply a little bit more okay. and then just apply that straight on top checking that I don't move at all so that's all snugged up then I get the nuts, thread them on, and 
and then I will begin to torque them up. So doing up the conrod bolts, we need to torque them up to uh, 20.3 uh, newton meters in the first step. So as you start to tighten up, just be even. First one. And then I'll do the second to um, this other middle conrod. First step. Then we go back to 44 newton meters on the larger torque wrench. So just check that's right, which it is. Let's come in here. Again, this is it's being even. First one. One, and then the other conrod in the centre here. That's the first click, and that's the second. So they're both done up to 44 new meters, and then we just need to spin the crank over and then do the. Um, one and four. Okay. Point I didn't mention that tightening up the conrod bolts you need a 13 mil, ideally on a uh, single hex um, socket. You need to make sure that the engine turns freely. So here you have the crank bolt itself. So all you do is uh, wind that in. It's tight. And then you should be able to get a 19mm ratchet and then just check that the whole engine uh, turns over as it should. So you're just checking for sticking points It shouldn't really exist because there's no compression on the engine. And that all seems like it's coming over nicely. Perfect.